Hey guys, this is Ty Traverse, and welcome back to Disturbed. I think this might be our last episode, but we'll see. Who knows? Uh, I don't know uh, which one. This one? October 18th, 1155? Yeah, this one. Cool. Which way do I go? I don't know, actually. What did I last get? I got the sword. That's right. I got the sword last time. So, let's go back. Go to our right. Nope, that's not the right. That is definitely the left. Spider, you are mine. Into the far door. I have Excalibur now. Yeah. The air is thick and the room is a mess of webs of body parts. And the big ass spider is gonna come and destroy it all. And I'm gonna be like, Bitch, get back! Ha suck! Before you can act, a large spider from above, you have no doubt that it is very hungry. Without hesitation, the spider attacks. You pull out your sword and stab the spider in the lung. Oh, as it lunges at you. In the lungs, as it lunges at you. Same thing, right? Yeah. Here we go. Over and over, you stab the monster. Each time, it squeals in pain. That was not a squeal, but I tried. It didn't work out. Different things came out of my mouth than what I wanted. The spider flees into the darkness overhead. You hear it. Wait, wait, what? Okay. You hear it motioning about possibly to strike again. You notice the key is on the ground close by your feet. Before more trouble happens, you quickly grab the key and make it for the door. Nice! There's no reason to go back in that room again. You are so correct. We have not killed the spider because that's wrong. You don't kill things. Unless they're trying to kill you. And maybe. But not that spider. Spiders are nice. They're good for the environment. And they kill all those pesky little gnats and flies. Anyway, let's go back upstairs. We're going to open that chest now that we have the key for it. Hopefully get some a harp so we can be like for this stupid doggy that ate my face. Chest residing in the wall. Blah blah blah. Yes, there's a chest. Open the chest. Approaching the chest, you notice that there is a lock fastened to it. With the key you found earlier, you try to uh, unlock it. The lock clicks and the chest opens. Out comes. Hey, it's a harp. Yeah. What a harp resting on Lilith cloth. You discover... Oh, shut up. Boom. You take a harp and close the chest. Go back downstairs. We have done it. Quick save. Now we can go and be like, Doggy. We're going we're gonna to be like Harry Potter and be like, Fluffy. We're going to play your beautiful music. Uh, downstairs. We're going we're gonna to play some beautiful music for Mr. Fluffy here. Actually, this one looks more like a rabid wolf, but, you know, whatever. Uh, is it the middle door? Yes, yeah, the middle door. Full of cages. You notice that there is an animal in the cage to the left of the room, but from the dark stains on its fur, it is dead. Well, sorry. You cautiously walk down the hallway, entering the room with two cell doors. Before you can say anything, out comes a large hound that looks like a mix between a kitty cat and a wolf. It looks really weird. The beast doesn't look very vicious. But one wrong move could surely be the end of you. You pull out the heart and begin to pluck its strings. Hey, there's actually music. I didn't know that was going to happen. The hound begins to wag its tail. <laughs> to your surprise, the beast walks away as if it was charmed by the harp. You never gave it much thought how powerful music can be. But it will save your life. That's why I play music, because I know one day there's going to be an evil hound trying to kill me, and I need to know how to play. Because if I play the wrong notes, they're gonna, it's going to kill me, I'm going to die, everyone's going to be sad. Yeah. Okay. Um, cell door on the left. You open the door to find a skeleton positioned in the corner of the room. There's also a bed and some chains attached to the wall. You have no doubt the individual was locked up for a long time. Inspecting the skeleton, you notice a ring on one of the bone fingers. One ring to rule them all. I knew we were playing Lord of the Rings. There is a faint glow of the light emitting from the ring, as if it were magical. You may have found such a useful ring. You take the ring and put it It is a perfect fit. Seeing that there is nothing of interest here, you have to leave the cell. Nuts! And now the door on the right. 
You enter the cell on your right. You see a wooden table on its side. There's some debris on the floor. A large hole in the corner of the room. Seeing nothing special, you motion toward the hole. You discover a passageway underground. Unfortunately, you can see fallen rocks blocking the path. Seeing that there is little you can do, you go back. Okay. Well, we now have a we now have a magical key, a uh, magical ring. I don't know what that does. The only thing I can think of is it's going to be my salvation for beating up the fish. Maybe the fish will be like, I'm blind! And then I can stab it with my sword. That's all I got. That's what I, that's what I think is going to happen. I'm going to go jump into the lake, and then the fish is going to die, and then I'm going to get that orb, and then go do voodoo ritual inside Stonehenge. Sounds like a perfect plan to me. Follow the trail in the grass. Go past the grave. Oh, here we go. This is it. This is this is for all the marbles. No, I don't want to quit. Return. This stupid game. Inspect the lake. You step near the lake and look down into it. Resting underwater is an orb of some sort sitting on the bottom of the lake. There is something strange about it if it was calling out to you. Kick me. You little bitch. Come get me. I'm gonna dive right in. You close your eyes and jump into the lake. You open your eyes and be like, damn, this water's clear. <laughs> you start to make your way towards it. Out comes giant fishy like. A large fish comes out and quickly notices you and his mouth stretch open. You grab the sores and close. And hold it close. Point it at the fish. The fish swims at you with haste. Just as it gets in range, you thrust the sword into its mouth. The sword penetrates and goes through its forehead of the fish. It struggles about in pain as blood filters through the water. You pull the sword out and the fish retreats out of sight. You doubt it will live long. Okay, I guess the ring had nothing to do with it. I just had to stab it with the sword. You pull out the sword of the fish and it retreats through that and blah blah blah. With the fish no longer a threat, you make your way to the orb. Hello! Holding out your hands, you feel it vibrate as if energy inside it were trying to break loose. This must be important. Yes! What the hell just happened? Save? Return. Of course it must be important. I got my very own vibrating orb. Yes! You exit the lake with the orb in your possession. You pause to see the new blah 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 blah. Okay. Uh continue around the trail. Yeah, there's the to the stone pillars. Hello, Stonehenge. Stand before you is a large stones, ranged in the shape of a circle. In the center, the stone what appears to be some sort of slot or hole. No doubt about it, something was meant to be placed here. You remember the orb you found in the floor of the nearby lake. You place the orb into the slot carved into the center rock. The stones that surround it begin to glow, and you begin to wonder, Where the fuck are the aliens? The light radiates and grows brighter. With a flash of light, your surroundings change. The ground no longer is grass. The newly discovered floor appears to be very old, as if crafted by somebody long ago. Well, that's very specific. Thank you. Thank you, game. Great, great narration. Here we go. Rubble and snow near the edges of the platform also hint that this is an ancient place. What was your first clue? Looking onward at the end of the pathway, it is a fountain of light. There seems to be no beginning or end. The endless power steadily flowing. You are amazed at such a sight. Approach the light. The light intrigues you, and you walk towards it. Rays of light brush about you as if they were seeking to take, to break away from its home. You remember that the ring you found, and point it towards the light. Captain Planet! <laughs> Your hand trembles as the light flows into it. You can do it! Before you can think, the ring begins to burn, and you stumble back. The light shines brighter from the ring. You notice a subtle warmth to it as you observe. You feel that you have accomplished what you must do here. You pick up the orb, and with 
You were back in your possession. You walk back towards the trail. Well, that was fun. I now have a magical ring. I wonder if I can ooh, explore the fields. Unicorn, I need you. You find an amazing <laughs> gaze. You find yourself gazing over the grass field of hills rolling in the distance. Unicorn, don't wait. Wait. Unicorn, no, come back. Unsure what you think. You think of a way to tame it. You suddenly remember the harp you found earlier. With the harp in hand, you pluck the strings. The soothing, calm sound comes over you as you listen. The unicorn comes into view and stops before you. The unicorn glares at you, and you begin to hear a faint voice in your head. Human, have ear for my words. That's the voice I'm giving this unicorn, just go with it. A great evil has gripped these lands, and it has rendered me powerless. You must find some way to stop it. I wish I could help you, but without my full power, I could do little. The fate of the land depends on you. Before you can speak, the unicorn turns and runs off again. You realize that you are alone to complete your quest of yours. This is no longer about saving your farm. You must save the whole land from the spreading darkness. You return back as you question what you should do next. Well, okay. Uh, I'm gonna guess I take Mr. Powerful Ring that I can summon Captain Planet with now. Go up to the top of the the pillory land and destroy the the crystal with my magical ring. Do 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 do. Enter. <laughs> Upstairs. Continue forward. This is it. Open the hatch. You open the hatch and pull yourself up. You have made it to the top of the tower. Before you is a stone of power resting upon an altar of rock. The dark vines have entangled the structure as if feeding off the energies of the stone. Your body begins to tremble as you stand before the stone. You definitely feel weaker being up here, as if the stone was sapping your life energy away. Destroy it! Destroy it! You must! My precious! You stretch forth your fist and point the ring at the stone. You can feel the resistance as if the stone was trying to defend itself. You try to keep hope and focus on the ring. A burst of light shoots out of the ring, penetrating the stone. You feel a very, the very air shake about you. The ground beneath you, your feet begins to vibrate. The ring becomes heavier to hold in place, but you know that it is working. You feel confidence and sense of joy sweep over you. The light intensifies, nearly blinding you. The ground beneath you shakes violently as the tower itself was trying to stop you. What little fear in you becomes powerless as you focus on your task. Everything goes white, blinding you completely. A weird sensation comes over you and you feel the light as a feather. You begin to feel a tingling sensation all over your body as you hone your senses. I'm slowly becoming Captain Planet. Or maybe Green Lantern. One of the two. The feeling suddenly flees your body and you find yourself motionless. Everything is cold and your ability to concentrate begins to leave you. You open your eyes, witnessing what is left of the tower. You begin to feel something. Warmth. Light. It is coming back. The lack of strength to talk to the unicorn comes into view. Light emanates from the horn on its head. All you can do is smile as the creature approaches. The light intensifies. You may have saved the land, but the unicorn has come to save you. Your adventure does not end here. That was a lot faster than I thought it would be. But hey, we did it. We have succeeded. I knew I'd win. This game can't beat me. You go fuck yourself, evil vines of towerness.
But yeah, so that was the end of Disturbed. I think I died all the times I possibly could die. I think. So, I think I think I did everything in this game. It might have, yeah. I died like six times just trying to get to this castle part, which was somewhat fun. A little bit. Huh. But yeah, that was Disturbed. We finally got through it, and I feel like this last rendition was by far the best because I wasn't running around in circles trying to figure out what the hell I was doing. It was just, right when I got the sword, it was just like, progress, 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 progress. You just knew exactly what you had to do. Everything else was just so easy. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, I'm back at my house in the ugliness that it is, not the pretty white walls like I had in the lab. But here I can play all my Steam games, which is kind of better. Hopefully I can get a nicer house and a better program so that I could do all the things everywhere at the same place all the time. But yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Uh, comment down below for any other games that you would like me to play since the series is over. And I'll see you guys in the next adventure. Bye, guys.